I bought the Xperia Z5 Premium as a cheap curiosity, with it being the first ever smartphone with a 4K display, and instead, I ended up being far more impressed with it than I was expecting. Join me in this video as I talk about all the cool features of this 9 year old flagship. The phone is quintessentially Sony in its design. It's a shiny all black glass sandwich, though there was also a silver, gold and pink colour to choose from, all rather nice looking. On the right hand side, we have a silver power button, which is supposed to act as the fingerprint scanner, though mine seems to be faulty, as I don't see an option in the software to use it. Below that, rather low down compared to every other phone, is the volume rocker and the two step camera button. Ah, my beloved. Look, phones nowadays are huge, just please give us this button on every phone. On the bottom we have a micro USB port and a lanyard hold, which is unusual. What is usual for Sony is the SIM and the SD card tray on the left hand side. That doesn't require a SIM ejector pin, just some fingernails, which is very nice. And to end things off, on the top we have the mighty old headphone jack. It's still a good looking phone overall, though its design did not bring anything new to the table, having been reused for years at that point. Still could be worse. The Z5 Premium runs Android Lollipop. This phone came out during a time when Sony was still customising their Android experience. With the model naming simplification that came along in 2019, the software experience on those phones became very pixel-like. So what does this all mean? Well the skin is pretty cool I think. The touch sound is so nostalgic, it sounds just like the PS3 and PSP. Likewise with the live wallpaper, which has that XMB wave look to it. The widgets are all very pretty, with the iconic Xperia fonts and glass elements used. And the icons are rather stylistically different from the material design ones by Google. Nine years later, I still think they look absolutely beautiful. They're an incredible mix of minimalism with skeuomorphic elements like shadows, reflections, directional lighting and extra details, like the speaker holes for the FM radio app. During this period of Sony software, we got quite a few pre-installed apps too, like an actual Photos app, instead of having to use Google Photos by default. There is a slideshow of your images on the top of the screen, like HTC Zoe. Similar in functionality too, the Movie Creator app within takes the recent images and videos and automatically make short movies based on them, though you also have the option of manually making one too. The Music app, previously known as Walkman, is up there with HTC's own music app. In terms of its recognition for being a damn good music app, we got some of the Walkman audio features here, like Clear Audio Plus and the SEE Extreme, which may not be to everyone's liking, but my dad enjoys those features on his Walkman, so there we are. The Video app at one point was fully featured, with PlayStation video integration, streaming from DLNA, and automatic downloading of additional content for locally stored movies, like cover art. It integrated with video and TV side view, which let you control your Bravia TV. However now, like many of the apps on this phone, it has been discontinued, and Sony only left in the barebone functionality. The video and TV side view app actually just redirects you back to the video app, interestingly enough. Likewise, we used to have Track ID, which was Sony's answer to Shazam. Powered by Gracenote, you could use it for identifying music via the FM radio app, music that played around you, and if you had a Bravia TV, you can even press a button on your remote to identify tracks within movies and TV shows. Surprisingly, the news app still works though, and AccuWeather seems to have not changed the API for years, since weather apps seem to universally always work on old Android phones. If you are one of the folks that misses the Digicam aesthetic, and can't believe how much they fetch on eBay, well look no further. This phone has the perfect digital camera look. There is practically no HDR going on in the auto mode, so the pictures do have that 2000s blown out look, with very little dynamic range. You can force HDR to be on in the manual mode, which does help, but it's still not as crazy as on modern smartphones. The colour science, I personally love actually. The saturation is very natural, and the greens are astroturf-like. Because of the large megapixel count, the images are well detailed, even when zooming in, and this phone doesn't do any of the modern horrible oversharpening. The pictures are also very well exposed, edging on slightly too dark. But that's about as much praise as I can give the Xperia Z5 Premium. The 4K video mode is a separate feature, as Sony knew that would heat up the CPU too much for everyday shooting, and the lack of EIS on the footage makes it pretty hard to watch. But it is sharp at least, compared to the Moto X style, released in the same year. The 1080p footage is however incredibly fuzzy and blurry, looking more like 720p footage, and the EIS doesn't quite match Motorola's. Keep in mind, there is no OIS, unlike on the Galaxy S6 from the same year. We have a lot of creative effects, but they all remind me of TouchWiz era Samsung. They're there to boost the feature set of the devices, as most of them aren't all that useful in practice. The front facing camera is at the very least better with color science than Motorola's, though it isn't as wide, but its 5 megapixel sensor does pull in more detail than Motorola. I appreciate that we have a swipe down to search for apps, like Spotlight, and there are many apps too that you can initialize, kind of like Nothing OS does, except with a restricted list of apps and a clunky UI. On a final note, the ringtones are pretty cool too. The Kilimanjaro ringtone is actually a sample that was also featured in a Polish Eurodance song nearly 30 years ago. Fun fact! And Tiger Style features a sound that I have retroactively named the 2000 Sawtooth, with its simple electronic bassline that I have a soft spot for. 
The headphone jack quality is really rather good, but it won't blow you away either. The output is rather quiet, as I believe Sony didn't opt in to use any dedicated amp. It has good kicks and good treble, but I found instrumentation to be muddy and left behind on most tracks that I've listened to. The Z5 Premium features the Snapdragon 810, which was a notoriously awful CPU that would thermal throttle if you looked at it the wrong way. And sure enough, using the phone for VR has caused me problems, especially with how warm my room has been. The video would start getting progressively blockier, the phone would slow down to a crawl, and the pre-installed apps wouldn't launch until the phone cooled down, with the battery sensor reporting a toasty 49 degrees. But if you can keep the phone cool, somehow, then the screen is perfect for VR in theory. Up close, you can see little chevron patterns on the display, but there is absolutely no screen door effect that you can see up close, like on the Nothing Phone too. But you know what's strange? My LG G5 also features no screen door effect, and I should look sharper than the Sony. The Z5 Premium features an 806 PPI display, the G5 has a 554 PPI display, and the Nothing Phone has a 394 PPI display. An annoying quirk of the album app is that it doesn't render the full resolution image, and seeing how long a third party app took to render a picture from my Fuji camera, I can see why. The CPU really does suck. And frankly, the screen isn't all that great either. It is really washed out looking compared to every other phone that I've tested here, including the G5, which also has an LCD screen. There's also another elephant in the room. The display actually runs at 1080p most of the time, and will only kick into 4K with the album app, or the video app. While 1080p is an integer scale to 4K, the UI does look noticeably blurry. I have however done all these tests forcing the phone into 4K, which does remove the blurriness of the UI, however the phone's performance takes a large hit which was probably the true reason why it was disabled by default, as opposed to the supposed battery saving that 1080p gives. These old CPUs were never meant to run such a high resolution display after all. In fact, YouTube doesn't even give you the option to play back in 4K, due to no hardware codec support for VP9 or AV1. Trying within the browser? Well, it's dire. So unfortunately, any 4K videos that you want to watch, you'll need to transcode to H.264 first. As a quick conclusion to this video, the Z5 Premium does a lot of things right, however it misses the mark on quite a lot of its features, including the 4K display. Sony would continue to use 4K panels with the Premium line of phones for quite a few years, so if I can find any of them for cheap, I'll make sure to give them a review. But for now, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you for the next one.